I sensed some confusion coming out of the last video on inferior goods, so I thought I would do another one. So let's make, let's assume that there's three cars in the market. And what I want to do this is I sense that some people thought that I was suggesting that a car in general is an inferior good, and that's not what I was saying. I was saying if we lived in a reality where everyone owned a car, a car was a necessity for life, and that is true in, in much of the developed world. I was saying that the cheapest car on the market might be considered an inferior good. And to think about that, let's just think about the entire population. So let's say this line, this line represents the entire population in our place, in our developed country where everyone owns a car. And let's say, let's say, let's represent this car with blue. So let's say maybe a, a third of the people, a third of the people right now have that car. Now let's say a good chunk of the people have this mid-size sedan. This is probably the car that most people, most people would like to have. It's a little bit safer, it's a little bit larger, it's a, it's a more powerful engine. And so this is where most people are sitting. This is our, where most people are sitting. And then you have this ultra, this kind of luxury, you have this luxury car, a Rolls Royce maybe. And so that a very small segment. So this end of the, this end of the line is the poor. So this is the poor in our population, and this is the rich. This is the rich right over here. So this is at some given income level, and um, maybe we could, we could say this is true at a particular price point, but we'll see. What we're going to talk about is the general impact on demand, so on the entire curve at any given price point, always assuming that this is the most expensive, this is in between, and this is the least expensive. Now what happens if income goes up from here? Income goes up. Well, the very poorest, they're not going to be able to necessarily just trade up to this mid-size sedan yet, although they'll maybe have more income for other things, or maybe they can get a nicer version of this. But for the most part, they're still going to be driving this car. But at kind of the, the boundary right over here, if incomes do go up, there will be people who now can afford the mid-size car, and that's what they want. And so these people might start buying the mid-sized car. And then, what will happen over here? Well, maybe there's a few people at the boundary over here. They now have the money to afford this very expensive car, and it suits their taste. And so they also, a very a small proportion also grows there. So what happened here? When income went up, income went up, the quantity demanded, the quantity demanded, demanded at a particular price point for this smallest car went down. But the demand for this mid-size car went up. It took a much bigger chunk out of this blue than a chunk was taken out of it by the orange. And also the demand for this very expensive car. And this very expensive car went up. And that was at a, at a particular price point. But assuming that this is the most expensive, this is the, the middle, and this is the cheapest expensive, this would be true of probably any price point. And so we have this phenomenon that when income went up, the quantity demanded at multiple price points for this car, so let me draw its actual demand curve. So this car right over here, this is price. This over here is demand. If its old demand curve looks something like this, if its old demand curve looks something like this, we're saying, and maybe you know, when we thought about this at first, we're thinking of we were thinking of the price point right over here. We noticed when income went up at that particular price point. The quantity demanded went down, and that would be true pretty much any price point, assuming that this was that this is always the cheapest car. So at any price point, you would have a decrease in demand. And remember, when we talk about a decrease in demand, we're talking about a shift of the entire curve. We're not talking about just one particular quantity. Now, there was another interesting question that was asked, and and it, I think it was a very it was, it's a very uh, nice and subtle thing to think about. I keep drawing these shifting demand curves, and if if at least I understand the question properly, the question is, well, does the all, does a curve when it shifts does does it necessarily shift perfectly, or does sometimes it change? Does it shift more at one price point or another? And the simple answer is. It can. It, 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 in fact, in very few circumstances would it probably be a perfect shift. Depending on the price point you're at, it would probably shift a little bit different. So the actual shape of the curve might change while it's shifting. But anyway, going back to this, so we see that this, this, this cheap car 